Hello there, everyone. In this module, we'll be learning about eczema. The term eczema comes from the word meaning to boil in Greek. It's used for groups of conditions that present with similar skin changes. Let's go over the classification of eczema. Eczema is categorized into two main groups based on their origins and triggers, exogenous and endogenous. Exogenous eczemas are provoked by external stimuli, such as irritant contact dermatitis, allergic contact dermatitis, photodermatitis, and infective dermatitis. Endogenous eczemas are provoked by internal factors, such as atopic dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis, numular or discoid eczema, astyototic eczema, hand eczema, stasis eczema, lichen simplex chronicus, and prurigo nodularis. Let's look at some exogenous eczemas starting with irritant contact dermatitis. Here's the etiology. It involves exposure to antigens such as soaps and detergents. It's prevalent in occupational exposure, such as with hairdressers, cooks, the printing and painting industries, and construction workers. The pathogenesis of irritant contact dermatitis is characterized by non-immunological mediated injury to the skin. As a result, the patient can develop eczema on his first exposure to the irritating substance. Next is allergic contact dermatitis. This is a skin condition with an allergic origin and is influenced by exposure to various allergens. Here's the etiology. Common allergens include the following. Plant-like parthenium, this is the most common cause of plant-induced dermatitis and airborne contact dermatitis. Metals such as nickel, which are the most common cause of contact dermatitis across the world. Substances like rubber and certain cosmetics such as hair dye and fragrances are prevalent allergens. Here's the pathogenesis. Allergic contact dermatitis is a type 4 hypersensitivity. An inflammatory response to allergen-causing skin eruptions doesn't occur upon the initial exposure. Upon the initial exposure to an allergen, there is no immediate eruption. Instead, the allergen penetrates the skin and is captured by the Langerhans cells. These cells then migrate to the draining lymph nodes initiating a cascade of events. Within the lymph nodes, the allergen stimulates naive T-cells, leading to the formation of memory T-cells. Upon subsequent exposure to the same antigen, these memory T-cells rapidly proliferate and release cytokines, triggering a robust inflammatory response. Clinically, this inflammation manifests as eczema. Now let's look at an endogenous eczema, namely atopic dermatitis. This is an itchy, chronic or chronically relapsing inflammatory skin disease characterized by itchy papules, which become excoriated and lichenified and typically distributed over flexural areas. Here's the etiology. The origins of atopic dermatitis involve a combination of factors. These include family history, genetic predisposition such as filigrin gene mutations which are responsible for the maintenance of surface skin lipids, and environmental factors. Now for the pathogenesis. The pathogenesis unfolds through the interplay of genetic predisposition and environmental elements. Filigrin gene mutations compromise the skin barrier's integrity, leading to defects in its function. This defect results in increased transepidermal water loss and facilitates the entry of pathogenic bacteria, such as Staphylococcus, into the skin. 
This breach triggers skin inflammation, further perpetuating the cycle of atopic dermatitis. Now let's learn about the grading of eczema. Eczema can be classified into three grades based on its progression, acute, subacute, and chronic eczema. First, acute eczema. This phase is characterized by intense symptoms and immediate onset. Features include intense itching, intense erythema, papillovesicles, edema, and oozing. Examples of conditions manifesting as acute eczema include contact dermatitis and pomphylix. Histologically, examination reveals spongiosis leading to vesicles and the infiltration of leukocytes in the epidermis and upper dermis. Next is subacute eczema. In this phase, notable features include erythema, crusting and scaling, fissuring, and itching. Examples of subacute eczema conditions encompass astyototic eczema and atopic dermatitis. Histologically, a key shift is observed with decreased spongiosis with no vesicles. Finally, chronic eczema. Characteristics of chronic eczema encompass excoriation, dryness of skin, fissuring, and lichenification, which involves the thickening of the skin, hyperpigmentation, and increased skin markings. Examples of chronic eczematous conditions include numular eczema, lichen simplex chronicus, and atopic dermatitis. Histologically, chronic eczema is distinguished by the absent spongiosis and the presence of a thickened epidermis characterized by hyperkeratosis and acanthosis. Let's learn more about lichenification. It's a plaque characterized by thickening of the skin, hyperpigmentation, and increased skin markings. Lichenification is caused by constant rubbing or scratching at the site of a pre-existing dermatosis and indicates a chronic condition. Notable examples include atopic dermatitis, astyototic dermatitis, and chronic dermatophyte infection. Now let's talk about senile eczema. Senile eczema, or astyototic eczema, is more common during old age due to the loss of surface skin lipids. The patients present with dry and scaly skin accompanied by complaints of itching. This condition is frequently observed over the legs. Now let's go over the management of eczema, starting with acute eczema. Managing acute eczema involves a comprehensive approach incorporating both topical and systemic interventions. For topical management, utilizing cold compresses is an effective initial step. Various solutions including Condi's lotion with 1 to 8,000 potassium per manganate, burrow solution with 8% aluminum acetate, normal saline, and silver nitrate serve as beneficial options. Local applications involve the use of topical corticosteroids, moisturizers, and emollients. For systemic management, the following options may be considered antibiotics, antihistamines, corticosteroids, or immunosuppressive medications, such as azathioprine, methotrexate, and cyclosporine. Chronic eczema involves a comprehensive approach encompassing topical, systemic, and physical interventions. Topical management includes topical corticosteroids tacrolimus, and pimacrolimus. Systemic management includes antihistamines, corticosteroids, and immunosuppressives such as azathioprine, methotrexate, and cyclosporine. Physical interventions are intralesional steroid injections and phototherapy. Let's learn more about corticosteroids. 
Here's their mechanism of action. Corticosteroids decrease inflammation through the suppression of the migration of polymorphonuclear leukocytes. They inhibit transcription factors and hinder phospholipase A2. They deplete Langerhans cells in the skin. Adverse effects include hyperglycemia, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, cushingoid features, osteoporosis, growth retardation in children, poor wound healing, cataracts, and myopathy. Now let's learn about azathioprine. Here's the mechanism of action. Azathioprine inhibits purine metabolism, leading to the inhibition of DNA, RNA, and protein synthesis. It exerts an inhibitory factor on both T and B cell function. It also decreases the number of Langerhans cells in the skin, resulting in immunosuppression. Adverse effects include nausea and vomiting, neutropenia and thrombocytopenia, and hypersensitivity syndrome. Azathioprine is also associated with teratogenicity. Next, let's talk about methotrexate. Here's the mechanism of action. Methotrexate operates through the antiproliferative pathway, inhibiting cell division in the S phase, which is folate dependent. It exerts anti-inflammatory action due to an increase in levels of adenosine. Adverse effects include nausea and vomiting, elevated transaminases, a risk of hepatic fibrosis, anemia, neutropenia, and thrombocytopenia. Oral ulcerations and skin ulceration are also among the possible adverse reactions. Finally, let's take a look at cyclosporine. Here's the mechanism of action. Cyclosporine inhibits cytokines that are involved in T-cell activation. It also inhibits the transcription of interleukin-2. Adverse effects include nausea, abdominal discomfort, diarrhea, headache, paresthesia, renal dysfunction, hypertension, and electrolyte imbalance. Thank you for listening to this module about eczema.